what is good afternoon good evening and good morning everyone everywhere depending on where and when you are watching again it is a warm summer sunny day outside my door here in philadelphia what's it looking like outside your door <laughs> stem s-t-e-m those initials have come to mean more to us than just a part of a plant, but it stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is our focus for July. We know that our children are out of school, and prior to this, parents were busy looking for summer camp programs, and no longer should we be looking for summer camps that just babysit, offer swimming and basketball and basket weaving. Our world is changing, it is moving quickly, it is moving faster than light almost. And the future of work is not so much in manual labor, although we still need manual labor. However, we're going to need to begin to equip our children in the sciences, in the technology, in the engineering and in the mathematic areas, if they are going to be able to compete on this world global stage that we now live in. Today, we're gonna to be talking about engineering. I am your co-host, Ambassador Lisa Parks, and welcome to Africa Online TV. Now, if you're joining in and you're watching on Facebook, but you want to be a part of the conversation, come on over here and join us on Zoom. The ID number is 514-199-854. That's 514-199-854. Unfortunately, we will not be having an editorial at this moment because our editorial chief is not here. So I'm going to take this time and turn it over to our chairman so she can welcome our guest. Thank you, Ambassador Lisa. I just wanna make sure people don't think I'm a man because sometimes my voice sounds that way. I am the chairperson or chairwoman. <laughs> chairwoman. Since I'm not showing my face, I wanna make sure you know, of that, uh, on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, I want to especially welcome our brother, Dr. Bafo, one more time. Uh, he was here last year to discuss engineering. He is so passionate about engineering, especially on the continent. As far as he's concerned, I, I may be wrong, engineering is the panacea of Africa's problem, you know, so mm. that's a year at heart. And uh, we have the pleasure of having Professor Swansi, and you can correct me if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. He is a mathematician. Talk about Africa's brain power. Wow. And he will be our guest in two weeks discussing the M in STEM. And I'm hoping that our chief executive editor, Mr. Asongle Fankamilake is okay, unlike him, not to mention that he will be late or anything like that. So we're just praying all is well. Uh, we, we, we definitely have to have that editorial because nobody does it better than him. Nobody. And, uh, Sister Ruth, we know you are on the road, but we love the, the Nubian princess on your screen. So uh, thank you so much for pressing your way. And um, I, I am going to um, uh, have um, uh, 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 Dr. Barfour introduce uh, Dr. Swazi before he starts speaking. We want him to introduce himself to, but I want him to introduce Dr. Swansea since it's his first time on the show. And after you introduce Dr. Swansea, you can introduce yourself, uh, Dr. Bafko. Oh, okay. Well, good afternoon, um, people. My name is Robert Bafko, and I'm going to actually let uh, Professor Swansea introduce himself because this is a goal that I just found, and I don't know much about the goal. Awesome. Yes. So awesome. uh, he and I started talking about, I believe, three days ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, three days ago on something different. And then uh, Pam sent me the request to see if you can find somebody within the network to uh, support mathematics. So, uh, Prof, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is John Atuswanzi. Uh, I was born in Ghana. Uh, had a part of my basic school in Ghana and continued in England and then went back again, studied a bit in Ghana and back to England and uh, I taught uh, 
in Nigeria. I taught in Ghana and I taught briefly in England. And uh, for the past 32 years, uh, I've been living in the United States. I've taught uh, first at the University of Delaware and then I left, I went back to England and uh, came back again, taught at uh, a, a school that my kids wanted to go. Uh, the ambassador will know there across the Delaware River uh, in Pensacola, Cherry Hill, there is a prep school over there uh, called Bishop Eustace Prep School. So my kids wanted to go to that school, so I took a, a part-time position over there as I was at Delaware uh, for reasonable tuition reduction, yeah. And then uh, I moved closer to the shore, so I live close to uh, Atlantic City, and I taught for some time at uh, Stockton University, and I have retired. So I just do consulting job here and there. I did consulting job for STEM at Al Fasal University in Saudi Arabia. I was a, one of the pioneers who designed the curriculum for the you know, transition STEM curriculum or foundation STEM curriculum. Awesome. Uh, I do a lot of side things for schools over here. I design engineering curriculum for a two year college in Atlantic County, and I supervise the implementation and all that. Yeah. So in brief, I'm an educator. You know? Awesome. Uh, Wonderful. Are, Thank you. I have a background in mathematics, but uh, I always say that uh, I teach students. I don't teach a subject. Uh, 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 that is part, and we're going to hear more from uh, uh, Professor Swansea in two weeks. Uh, Dr. Barso, I have no idea you guys just met, but I can tell you this. I think that your meeting was so that Dr. Swansea can be on our program. I think that's what that your meeting was all about. You know, so anything else that comes out of it is, you know, ancillary. So Dr. Balfo, please, for our guests we are seeing for the first time, you know, you want to take a moment and introduce yourself, please. Reverend Pam, oh. excuse me, before you start, Reverend Pam, you're having uh, voice issues again. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know what I, it's the same computer I use, and I don't know. I, I we're not understanding you very well. So you were, you were asking for very, um, Professor Bafu to introduce himself, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, well, let me just give you the summary of it. I currently teach at the University of Georgia uh, in the College of Engineering. Uh, my background is mathematics. I, uh, of course, I've come originally from Ghana. I come from Ghana. I went to school in Ghana, got my first degree, came here, went to Iowa State, came to Georgia Tech. I've uh, been teaching across, but the, the most interesting piece of my background is me going back to Ghana and stayed there for about seven years. Uh, I went to Ghana and stayed there and worked as a vice president provost of a very young university that we really developed. Uh, and so uh, over the course of the seven years, I think we did so much good uh, that personally, I think I feel good that at least I went back home and supported the development of the African agenda. And I think yes. what I also uh, see is it has given me the strength to understand the challenges that we have at home and potentially how to deal with them. Uh, okay. And so for the past you know, few years, I've been going back and forth on different fellowships to go and support the development agenda of some of the young universities there. I've developed my own programs. I, have, I currently run a small uh, organization called Sankofa Learn. You know, for those who are very familiar with the word Sankofa, it's nothing but go back to your roots you know, and do good stuff there. You know? yes. Yes. Yeah, take whatever belongs to you and make sure it works. So I have Sankofa learned that, you know, uh, you know, about two years ago, we developed a workshop for the continent. We had about 200 university faculty and uh, students. And But the good thing is we did everything from here. My colleague and myself, I, I was sitting exactly where I'm sitting today in my office here in my house. My colleague was in Illinois and we had students and professors across the entire continent, Malawi. That's wonderful. East, Egypt. That is the whole idea. You know, for me, my thinking is, I know most of us will not go back and stay in Africa. 
Uh, and that's okay. That is the plan because you know Africa has its own challenges, US has its own challenges. But we need to be able to find a way to uh, uh, to sync. You know, with technology like we are doing today, we should be able to send. Uh, uh, you know, let me give you a good. I talked to a colleague in, in Ghana yesterday. He is coming from an agency in Ghana. Three of them, they are coming to a university here for a nine-day workshop, and each of them will pay ten thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. See, that is a to problem. come to the states. To come to the states. Yes, to come to the states to. Uh, and I will tell you, if I give them the same package and I tell them I will do it from remote or I even come there in person, they will not take it. And, you know, it, it, it's more complex than that. They will not take mm -hmm. it. I think uh, 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 Professor Swansea understands me very well because of her DM, because of the level of corruption. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so it's a very, very uh, complex situation that we have at home. By my thinking, that there are so many people, especially the youth, that we can help by remotely helping them do what we are doing. And so uh, for me, it's, you know, you know, I teach, I have a lot of time in my hands. So all what I want to do is to find a way to develop systems, uh, organize things that hopefully will help uh, change the mindset of our people. I think the older folks will not change, but it is very dangerous if you can get the youth also to take uh, the way the older folks uh, think. And if that happens, then we know the future pretty much is, is not good. And so uh, I'm in engineering. I've done different STEM programs, travel around pretty much the world. And so you know, I'm here to, you know, to, to, to support the uh, development agenda of uh, the African Brains Bank. And hopefully, we can achieve something in our lifetime. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me better now? No, nope. you can't. It's too bad. <laughs> oh my God. It doesn't need to lie. Okay, but we need to have it. Okay. Wait, let me check this because is this better? There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's better. There now. you go. Yes. There you oh go. My God, Jesus Christ. We, this is going to be an awesome show. It's the same, same computer I use for church. But anyway, so real quick, um, uh, uh, before I hand over to you, Ambassador Lisa, um, Dr. Bafo is one of our uh, STEM directors at Africa's Brain Bank. And like I said earlier, he's been on this show. He was here last year and he's back here this year. He is a very resourceful uh, powerhouse among our people, very passionate. It takes, uh, you have to be passionate about your people to go back home. We know it's never easy. Yes. So um, Dr. Baffo, I'm gonna pose the first question since our main anchor is not here and I'm sure Ambassador Lisa has a lot of questions for you. And Sister Ruth too is going to have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> you know, um, you know this engineering. I posed this question on the forum. One of my my siblings, who is a physician, when he was making a speech at one of my nieces' graduation, he said uh, he gave a story about uh, a patient without the patient's name, and they thought, oh, because he was a doctor, he had everything rosy in this country, and he said. They forget that when he was he first came to this country, he was a stainless steel engineer. And while we were trying to process who a stainless steel engineer really is, he said a pot washer at a restaurant. <laughs> so it's a dishwasher. Can a dishwasher be called? <laughs> Everybody's laughing. An engineer, or who is an engineer? Because you know our people they like titles on the continent. I mean, <laughs> if, if somebody you know is doing maybe janitorial work, they will, they will not say they are a maid or whatever, they will say I'm a what a environmental engineer, something like that. So who is an engineer? Okay. Before I answer that, let me take a step back of this stainless steel engineer and dishwasher business. You know, it's interestingly, you know, I passed through Germany for a year before I came here. I also washed dishes for maybe about a month, but I didn't call myself a stainless steel engineer. Maybe now I know, maybe I could have used that term as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you see, the, the, the term engineering has become so generic that people use it for all kinds of things. Uh, you know, people talk about domestic engineers, like housewives are domestic engineers. Yes. And so, you know, for me, it, the, the name is not uh, what matters, but what that person does. Uh, to support whatever he or she is supposed to do is what qualifies. The, for instance, for me, 
hardly would you hear me say my name is Dr. Bafo. I will not say that. I will not say my name is Professor Bafo or Dr. Bafo. I will just say my name is Bafo. Now, if I talk to you and you think maybe I have a little more sense in my head and that qualifies me to have a title, that's fine with me. It doesn't matter to me. So, you know, in the broader sense, you know, when it comes, remember these terms, you know, uh, we have doctors. Right now, if you look at people who have doctors in front of their names, we have pastors who have gone to a two-week seminar and they call themselves doctors now. And they have, they have so many people following them. You have people who are masquerading as doctors. They don't have PAD, they don't have anything, but they are teaching in some in universities. Uh, look, I have actually caught a few of them. Even in Ghana, we have uh, uh, two people who technically ran away because they were using the title doctors. And so the names are, like I said, is not you know, the biggest issue. So let's talk about who an engineer is. And that is probably the centerpiece of our talk today. Generally, the word engineering is coming from this part, at least the, as we know right now. I'm not going to go back into the, uh, the early civilization of Egypt and stuff. But for now, when you hear the word engineering, the, the key is this. The key thing is you are trying to change communities. You are trying to change humanity. You are trying to develop things that will make people's life better, right? Now, uh, psychologists are doing the same thing. Medical doctors are doing the same thing. So now you need to begin to change who an engineer is as compared to a medical doctor. Because the doctor is trying to make your life better. I'm trying to make your life better. Now, generally, when you look at engineers, we are looking into using science, mathematics, technology nowadays, because technology is also moving very fast, and then experience to build stuff. All right, so the thing that we use, you know, the roads we drive on, the buildings we stay in, the air conditioning that we use, the pens we use to write, the chairs we sit on, all those things are engineered. And so when we generally say engineer, we are talking about somebody who has the background, you know, using uh, uh, mathematics, using the sciences, using experience in the technology to create stuff, you know, to innovate stuff, to produce stuff that will support, to solve problems. So remember, engineers, our job is nothing but solving problems, you know, but we are more into the infrastructure part, not in the health part. So hopefully, just this broad uh, uh, explanation kind of give you a sense as to who engineers are. So if you want to look at engineering, now remember, engineering is a very broad field. So we have people who focus on uh, machines. For instance, mechanical engineers are the guys who develop airplanes, you know, and even if you go to mechanical, you're still going to have another brand called aerospace engineering. Aerospace are guys who are going to make sure the plane that you fly in have aerodynamics that it can float at this level, it can zoom at this speed, and then you have people who do, you know, like your air conditions at home. Those are mechanical engineers. The TVs you watch are designed and generally built by electrical engineers or those with electronic background. When you drive on your road and you're cruising at 70 miles per hour, but you don't feel it, because a civil engineer made sure that the road is designed very well, you know. And if you are getting the curve and you drive 60 miles per hour, it's going to throw you off. Uh, are the road. And that tells you, you know, the civil engineer told you so. So there are all kinds of engineers out there. And all what we want to do is to make sure that the life yesterday is different from the life today. And we hope today's life is much better than today, the life yesterday. That's engineering. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Baffo. Over to you, Madam Ambassador. Thank you, Reverend Pan. Thank you, Dr. Baffo. That was very interesting. Because one of my questions was going to be, not who is an engineer, but how many types of engineers are there? So we talked about civil, you talked about mechanical, and... We have chemical, you know, the clothing that you wear. You know, remember, if you go to, you know, several years ago, you buy a little piece of cloak, and maybe after one year, it is gone, or the color yes. has changed. All right, so mm -hmm. you, have, you have chemical engineers who are working with people with chemistry background, chemists, to come with the best color to use and the best combination of color to so that when the sun shines on them, it will still stay the same for the next 10 years. That is purely chemical engineering. If we talk of mathematicians like Professor uh, uh, Swansea, 
to look at how do we design things, you know, because they're dealing in you know, curves, angles and stuff like that, to make sure that look, if I design this system, I can have a, a bigger volume, even though the space is small. You know, so we have civil engineers, mechanical, electrical, and now we have biological engineers, we have biomedical engineers, we have environmental engineers, we have agricultural engineers, we have aerospace, we have all the, there are so many of them now, you can't actually count, you know, originally, there were just about four, we call them traditional engineers, mechanical, civil, electrical, and chemical. Now you have so many divisions within each, uh, you know, okay. even, if, even if you break civil, you're gonna have structural engineers also, you know, people who deal with bridges only, you're gonna have transportation engineers, those who are focused on the traffic and the signal timing and the signal design, you're gonna have all, all so the, the engineering is significantly broad. Okay, so basically, like you said, an engineer is the, is one who develops things to make life better. So earlier, you were talking about the program where these people were coming to America for $10,000 just for a nine-day seminar, but you can give them the same thing that, you, that they're coming here to get, sitting right there in your home, doing it online. My question, one of my questions is, how do you combat the network issues. If you were to, if you were doing a program, you know, I, I travel in Africa a lot, so I know that a lot of them don't have steady network. They don't have um, the ability to pay for uh, steady network because it, they have to buy data and things like that. And then the network is not good. So how would you? How do you? Um, how do you design your programs to com combat that that issue? Well, if they can pay nine thousand per person to come to Florida. A workshop, they should be able to get the basic routers and the data. You know, look, if they spend a thousand dollars to buy a thousand dollars to take care of this setup for the whole one week workshop, for instance. But generally, okay. I think you're looking at a much broader case where if you want to go to the rural folks, how do you really support yes. them? Yes, okay, that's and what I'm that, talking about the, the normal everyday people, right? The normal everyday people. And so that is where technology comes in. So, what we you know, for me, what I'm looking at is to be able to have system that, to give you a good example, just about two weeks ago, I was talking to a group of Ghanaians and I said, look, I want a simple gadget, maybe like my phone, right? Maybe a little bigger than this phone. And this, I will not call, I will call it just a tablet, maybe hundred dollars. You can produce it in Africa or somewhere else. And all you do is we can now offload videos that have been produced here or in Ghana onto this device. So the students have it, they don't need any internet. You know, so they can have it. If they need to recharge it, they can take it to a center maybe once every month, once every year to get more fast. So the system's already out there. I said that uh, the problem of Africa is at time not the technology, but at time is the world power, you know, the, the world to get it done to support uh, the system, to support the youth. Uh, there are so many solutions out there. For instance, look, people are going to Florida to do 10,000, I think maybe three or four people are coming. If they want, look, we can't, myself, I can get Professor uh, 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 Swansea on board, I can get Professor Formula, I can get a few of my colleagues, design a package that is more powerful for them and charge them half or even a third. Yeah. They are not interested. That's the bottom line. You said they're not interested? No, they are not. You see, the reason why they are not interested in this is this. Slave mentality. Yes, because see, we, we Black people have been, you know, I don't know, we've been conditioned not to work with Black people. Yeah. And, and there, are two, there, are, there are two sides of that. At times when we work, we work with Black people, you get bruised so much, you don't want to work with Black people anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. You know, look, I, I, I yeah, I mean, we all, we all, all of us have seen that. If you bring a black person to your house uh, to do some work, if you are not careful, the next time the black person comes in to steal stuff, you know, or, or no, give that's you. The truth. Yes. Or you call the, black, the person, say, well, I'm not available. I'm not, and the person will get a job. Hard. So that is one area. And the other area is, you know, for some weird reason, blacks generally don't want to work with black people. And so when you take it to Africa, what you find out is this. Because of the level of corruption, right? Instead of, you know, they don't want me to know that they are corrupt. <laughs> you see, so they, they are happy to give uh, the Chinese person 
a $1 million bribe, but they will not give it to me because they know for sure maybe I will tell it. Mm -hmm. And so they are willing to give the Chinese, even Americans, they bribe Americans, they bribe the Chinese, they bribe the Europeans. But when you go, look, I'm sitting down one day with the minister of, uh, actually, I went with the Ghana ambassador to the US many years back. We are sitting down the minister of transport and uh, we are, they have a very basic problem. They don't have a solution. And all I said was this, I'm a professor in the US, I have colleagues in this field. When I go back, I'm going to put a small team together so we can guide you to do things like this. And when I mentioned, for instance, we can guide you to look at when people send you a bid, we we'll make sure they are doing the right thing. As soon as I mentioned the word bid, somebody said we have the technical man on the ground because that is where they make the money. The bid is supposed to be one million, but they will make it five million dollars and then squander four million dollars. So the road that is supposed to last for twenty years will last only for one year. Wow. That's the problem. That's the okay. problem. All right, before uh, we go to Sister Ruth or Professor Swansea, you know, um, Dr. Bafo, what you're saying is right. Uh, and uh, we, don't, we don't get into politics here. So this question I'm asking you is not about a political question, but sometimes our governments, and I'm not mentioning any particular government, has purposely made broadband and connectivity, uh, you know, very, inaccessible and very costly for the people. I think some of them want to keep their people in darkness, you know? Mm -hmm. So the, we want to uh, uh, address these issues also see what the, uh, our people, uh, private enterprises and, you know, individuals can do or groups can do without waiting for the government. The second thing, um, we had a young man on this show. I don't know if you came across that uh, video. It was trending on YouTube. The video was made by a non-African. And when I saw it, I sent it to my networks to see if anybody could get in touch with him. And one of our team members actually knew him. His name is Emmanuel Sansri Mansri from Sierra Leone. He made he 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 made um, uh, uh, a oh, solar solar powered car from 100% trash materials, garbage that he picked up and made. And this car was causing so much commotion. The government wants him to get security clearance whenever he wants to take the car out. If you did not see it, I'll send it to you. He was on our program. And this is the problem. So I've asked that question about what other people could do besides government. And the second one, uh, and uh, Professor um, Swansea can weigh in. This is a young man that was turned away from an engineering program in a university yes. in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. they, they, they put him into geology. Can you believe that? So mm -hmm. as we speak, even though he has proven his engineering, you know, uh, uh, abilities, they, yeah, yes, yeah. They, they still have him in geology. So I want you to address both. And then uh, after that, we'll go to Sister Ruth, after Professor Swanzi uh, weighs in. Okay. So I'll, I'll take the second one first, you know, and this is uh, my own personal experience when I went to Ghana. You see, when you live in this part of the world and you understand how things work here, you change, you become a different person. Uh, and the people at home are also another group of people. Uh, I always say that if you come to the United States and you come to school here for four years, five years, and you go back to your home country, you cannot really claim any experience from this country. You can't because you yeah. have never worked here. Yeah, you know, yeah. you just went to school here. And this is what happens with our people and at times, People assume that because our leaders came to school here, they should know what happens here. No, they don't know. Uh, right. So this, this, this is what happened. I went to Ghana and in my first year, I found out the best engineering student in the whole school is a young girl, right? Mm -hmm. A young girl, AC. AC, it turns out, AC came to the program with a liberal arts background. Hmm. By Ghana standards, you are supposed to come to engineering with science. Hmm. Okay, hmm. so yeah, you know, so, and, and our program was actually under some kind of tutelage with one of the bigger universities in Ghana. So our degrees were being awarded by them. Just like me having a small college here and I'm affiliated with 
MIT and MIT awards my degree, but I teach the course myself. Yeah. So we went through this process. At the end of four years, this girl finished and got the best, the best grade every student has gotten in the entire university for all oh the my God. This little right. girl. And so now it is time for her to graduate. Now, this university that awarded the degree came to me and said, they will not give her the degree because she did not come in with science background. Oh my what? God. What? Oh, oh my God. Ria, I want you to see, I, I like the response because that tells you our people are just plain stupid. Mm -hmm. And I said, so do you want, so you are telling me that you asked me to come for interview in Atlanta. That is all what you told me. You said the interview is at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. I showed up. And, and you are telling me since I didn't fly to come to Atlanta, but I drove to Atlanta. <laughs> you, that, that's, see, Sorry. that's the point. That, but, but see, the sad part is I, I talked to the, the head of the university. This is one of the largest universities in the country. And the person said, it is a policy. They, they have to stick to it. Ridiculous. 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 OK, so that is why the, the student was taking to geology. That is why, because you see, the sad part is, you know, and, and if you have weaker grades, you know, uh, you know, Professor Swansea knows that. If you, you know, you do the A-levels and your grades come in and they are not that strong, they put you anywhere. You can have a science student who will be given archaeology. You're right. Or even yeah. history. Archaeology. Seriously, where are you uh, supposed uh, to dig up bones at? And, uh, we don't we, uh, and we don't dig any bones in Ghana. So people are doing archaeology. <laughs> And they are happy. So, so see that tells you. And so for me, look, if I'm gonna do anything meaningful for the rest of my life, I think that will be changing the education structure of Africa, mm -hmm. especially engineering, because it has not worked. You yeah. know, for me, for me, the, the kind of engineering that we are teaching in Africa is not what we need. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we can't take MIT engineering program and dump it in Africa and that is not what we need, but you're still gonna get professors out there who argue that, yes, we need to have that. I don't have any problem having a very small engineering program because we need innovation. We need complex stuff done. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot fix a common pothole, if you cannot just get you know, system, basic system, if you cannot take a cassava to become something good for the country, what are you going to space for? What is the point? Exactly. Why are you building a system to go to space? And so that mm -hmm. is the reason, uh, uh, Pam, why that student was put in geology. But I also want you to understand, this guy may not necessarily have to become an engineer. Remember, engineering requires some science, some background in mathematics. You mm -hmm. need a little, we need to some, to some extent, some strong math in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that is why, personally, I think the engineer that we have at home uh, may not be what we need because if you want to become the kind of engineer, you need to take calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, and maybe calculus four in some cases. But this young guy may not be able to take those courses, and so I'm they sorry. will not put him there. And so, what were those, I'm sorry, what were those courses you just um, said? Oh, oh, calculus. This is calculus. Oh, calculus. calculus. Oh, calculus yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this guy could have gone to a very beautiful two-year technical school, right? Mm -hmm. And then come back and open his own shop and train people, build systems, and he'll be a fantastic. Look at this country here. Most people who are doing so well went to two year colleges. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are the air conditioning guy who comes and fix your air conditioning, your electrical guy. They never went to college. They, went to, they never went to a four year, they went to two year colleges, and they are doing just fine. We in Africa have changed the whole, we are copying and overcopy. We think, look, you want to build the best engineer even though we don't need it. That's a problem. Now, on the, sec on the first question about what do you think we can do? Look, it's, it's a tough question because you need an enabling environment to survive. Generally, in most systems, the enabler is the government because they have the press. Mm -hmm. And the government is not interested. And I think you started your conversation by saying, they want people to live in the dark because if you if you have the light, you will not vote for them. Yeah. You know, so for me, let me tell you, and I and, and I want to make this prophecy. I'm not a pastor. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> say this. Thing. But look, you know what is going on in Sri Lanka? No. 
Oh no, Sri Lanka, they went yesterday, they burned the pres the president's house down, the prime minister's house down. What? You said they yeah. burned it down? They burned it down to us. Yeah. And so the president and the, and the prime minister, have, all of them have decided they're going to resign. Because the economy has become so bad that they cannot survive. And this is what happens when you allow water to move, right? It moves in a direction that it thinks it can flow. If you, if you create a dam and you keep piling water on top, the dam will collapse. Yeah, right. right. That, is what it, that is what is going to happen to Africa. You get marking on the wall. Very soon, you will see elected presidents and ministers being kicked out, their houses being burned down because they used to do the same exact thing. And so until that wow. thing happens, we are going to have this mess going on on our continent. Okay, before the yeah. next person speaks, before uh, Dr. Swansi speaks, Dr. Baffer, thank you so much. That was loaded. I just yes. want to put out a disclaimer. Africa Online is not encouraging anybody to go burn down <laughs> any president's house. Dr. Baffer is merely reporting what happened on the news from the news from Malaysia. So I want to make that clear. Yes. This, this, you know, Sri so, this Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, Sri, Lanka. Oh, Sri Lanka, I don't know what I said, but anyway. So, uh, and um, our chief executive editor is here, the best journalist ever. So at the top of the hour, Nia song, um, before the announcements, you will do your editorial. I hope all is well with you. So let's hear from uh, Professor yeah. Swan Swansi, and then we will go to Sister Road, Ambassador Lisa. No, wait, 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 wait. Before uh, Professor Swansi, I have a question to ask. Dr. Bofu about Bafo, Bafo. Bafo. Don't, don't look at you are African. Bafo. No. The girl Bafo. with Bafo. I'm so, good. Please forgive me. No, no, you are good. I get it. I get okay. my name crucified all the time, like Jesus Christ. I'm gonna have to call you Robert, but I don't want to disrespect Ro you. No, 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 call me Robert. Call me Robert is my dad. Call me Robert. This show lady. is unscripted, so we can interrupt each other. Go ahead, I'm yeah. well, Lisa. The young the young girl who got the highest grades in engineering, who they decided, I don't know how long this course was, but they decided at graduation time they could not give her a degree in engineering. Why did they not say that at the beginning? I don't know if it was three years, four years. Why did they not come up and tell her or say something to anybody about her not being able to get an engineering degree because she didn't have a background in math? Well, so 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 this is the answer. I got to know that in the in you know because I went there and I think she was probably in the second or third year of her program. Oh, it's okay. a four-year program. So my plan, my plan, and I was in charge of academy. So my plan was. I'm going to convince this guy. We started talking about that, and finally they, they ruled against us. So what I did was this. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I actually registered her because I knew she didn't need to study anything, but I can just go write the exam and pass. So I registered her from the university's coffers to go take the science exam. There are three of them. I think she did electronics, I uh, believe fixes, and another course. And then she, without any issue, she just passed. And awesome. I, I made it personal. This became a personal issue for me. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I took her application to London myself. I went to the UK, went to Westminster University, applied for her. She got school. I gave her money even at the airport. I went to oh, see awesome. her at the airport. You know, this girl has a PhD now in electronics. Awesome. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. you, 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 you were her destiny facilitator. Yes. And, and at this point, I want to say this. We need more male teachers to do this because students, especially girls, get discouraged. I, I've told the story before, and I will say it again. The first year, first of all, uh, when I went to high school, they put me in economics, geo, math. Instead of uh, economics, geography, math, but I wanted to study biology, chemistry, physics. And they told me, oh, yeah, I did so well in math. I did so well in economics. I did so well in, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, geography. But I also did well in chemistry and physics. So I, I didn't really like biology because I like touching animals. But then I, I, after I, I just knew uh, economics, job math was not for me. So I went into biology, chemistry, physics, and math. But the first semester in that school, I came at the top of the class in physics and the guys took it personal. I, I, I'm just trying to applaud Doc, Dr. Buffer for going out of his way to enable a, a girl child. Yes. In, my, in my case, my classmates, they had a meeting and they took it, they were offended that a girl came at the top of the physics class as if physics, the subject was created only for boys. 
<laughs> I, I said this because I'm not the only one. And of course, after their meeting, they were starting together. I never came first again. I was always either second or third. But it, 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 they should have encouraged. And I didn't have any, my, anyway, my physics instructor, Mr. Benga, I don't know where he is now. He actually always uh, uh, applauded me and lauded me for my work, but my classmates did not. So I just wanted to take a moment to, uh, to applaud Dr. Baffa. And that's why Africa's Brain Bank, our STEM program, phase one is for girls. Then the boys can join. So mm -hmm. Ambassador Lisa, over to you. I don't know if you finish your questions or Professor what well, I, I had another question, but. Um, I don't know how much time near some has that he needs be, to do his editorial. So real quickly, um, <clears throat> I know for a fact that in Uganda, especially in Ginger, the dam that supplies the electricity to the community was built incorrectly. That's sure. why I still have rolling back, you know, rolling blackouts. You know, I got to shift from this side of town to the next side so I can have light at night. <laughs> you know, at eight o'clock, you hear that, you hear those uh, generators coming on, you know, the electricity about to call them out. So how do we, how do you as engineers redesign the dams that, because I believe you mentioned something about a dam somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we redesign the dams without having to destroy the whole thing? Or do we have to restore the whole thing and start over again? I have no idea because I'm not a dam engineer, so I would not. Oh, I mean, so what, okay, good. <laughs> what kind of engineer is that? What, this, that would, this is this is civil, but civil. civil. civil yes, yeah, it's civil. I'm a civil, but I'm in transportation. Sure. I'm oh, in transportation. Roadway road design. So obviously, okay. I, sure. I don't know why. I mean, because see, remember when you do a dam, the dam, the focus, a dam is just a one directional thing where it falls to turbines and they generate the power. So, so maybe what they are telling me may not be true because if the turbines are working fine, the power is not generated on a different side of the, of the dam. It's, everything is transported to one side, electrical engineers do that. So you may want to find out what the problem is. It may be the water level is low at time and they will not tell you the truth. And mm. so at time, at time they ration the power, when the power level is low, the generation goes down. When the generation is down, they cannot transmit my power. So they're going to find a way to tell, like Ghana, Always they will say, oh, this tra uh, transformer is down, so they are fixing it. And therefore, <laughs> yeah, and therefore, 10% of the people here will not have power. That is not true. What is happening is they don't have enough generation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so they, you know, if they, if they can only produce 50, they can't supply to 100. You see? Right. And so, so you may want to find out it may not be an engineering problem. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm a, I know that when I was in Nigeria for two months, out of the two months I was there, I'm gonna tell you about 90% of the time we had no electricity. And we lived in a new development and the electric company just would not provide the electric. And then they wanted to pay their bill on time. And when they did not pay their bill for not having electricity, the electric <laughs> came out and they cut the wires from their homes because they didn't pay their bills on time. Well, well that is politics. That one, the Nigeria issue is more political than, uh, than actually. Ah. I yeah. just couldn't, I'm like, I'm here two months and I've had no electricity for 90% of that time. Wow. Well, Nigeria, everybody has a generator. I've been to Lagos a few exactly. times. Exactly, everybody. Yes. Yeah, yes. So, ne so next time when you're going back, you need to travel with a generator yourself. <laughs> <laughs> or, or ship it before you travel. Well, so. well that, that's if you're going to have the diesel to, 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 to foil the uh, uh, generator. Well, you need to but, ship, you need to ship diesel also, so. <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or carry it in your hand luggage. So let's yes. hear from Professor Swansea, then Sister Ruth, then we'll let our chief executive yeah, Ruth, yeah, Ruth is still on the road traveling, so we won't be hearing from her. We don't want her distracted while she's oh, 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 she's driving. Okay, no problem. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Professor Swansea. Okay, uh, let me let me just see the two questions you asked so that I can ask something to uh, Professor Baffles uh, answer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can read, you know, uh, visit the questions. Yeah. Oh, 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 the first question I was saying, and I did a disclaimer that we're not a political uh, group or whatever, but that, you know, the government, most of the time, the, the availability or uh, inavailability of connectivity broadband is a government issue. They don't want to provide it to their people because they want to keep them in darkness without accusing any particular government. So I, my, the first one was like, what, what can the private sector do and African people? 
or people of African descent do uh, besides the government to help with connectivity, broadband, you know, those type of things, in, uh, uh, internet connections. Then the second one, I was talking about the placement of students, you know, uh, where I gave the example of this young man that, that developed uh, a solar uh, powered car that is functional, operational. The video is there, you know, from complete 100% trash. Mm -hmm. He picked up trash stuff. And this, this, this car, and the only thing, the, the challenge, why the, the masses uh, 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 a lot is effort, the government is rest restricting the use of that vehicle, that asking him to get security each time he wants to drive the car, because when he drives it, it causes commotion. I understand that for safety and security reasons, yes, he should have security, but this is a guy that barely has money. He actually yeah. used trash to build this car. So how would he be able to afford security? So right. this guy was placed in the university, this is Syria, on the university, turned him down for an engineering program and put him in geology, which is where he still is. Let, let me take the second part and then I'll really see the first part. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Professor Swazi, can you come a little closer to your microphone? Because you sound- Yeah, your audio. You sound like you're in a cloud. We want to hear you. Can you hear me better now, please? Is yeah, it... I think you're, you're good now. Okay. Uh, there are gatekeepers. <clears throat> Any institutional structure you look at, they keep people as gatekeepers. Mm. Who sort people into pigeonholes? Mm. Mm. And this process is what, in fact, the young gentleman encounter and the same thing with the connectivity of the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Africa, because of our colonial, colonial inheritance, we, is, we are still living in the old structures. Mm -hmm. uh, structures built by the colonial masters, which some elitist group acquired, and therefore they try to protect that particular group. Why would a, a young man who is excelling not be allowed to study what he wants to study? That sort of aspiration, where you see you have talent. Mm -hmm. Until we reshape the curriculum in schools and colleges, we may be continue producing or having the same type of human capital production. Mm -hmm. Let me explain that. When you look at the K to 12 school system in the United States, at a very early age, parents and students and the school administration and teachers, they meet regularly, what they call parent teacher meeting. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. When you know the grading period ends, they meet K to 12, not college. Through those processes, a concerned parent can help identify and share with the teachers and the school authorities the interests of the child. And the job of teachers is to identify talent and creativity in students and facilitate that to come on. But not in Africa. Professor Buffer will bear me out. In Ghana, for example, the school authorities will determine which track you have to go by the time you are in secondary school, uh, yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. Rather be a science student or art student mm -hmm. or business student, they will determine that. So what happened to the young lady that having that sort of transition from arts to science, they have already predetermined it that no, you are our students, and that is where you belong. <laughs> my children, in the, when my children were very young in this country, the family physician, the doctor, did have his first degree in history. Wow. He had a history degree before he went to medical school. That will never happen in Africa. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so you never. are put in a pigeonhole, that is where you belong. So. The challenge Professor Buffalo had with uh, 
the bigger university. I, I think that is a classical example. So what we need to do, continue the conversation, offering various insights, uh, insights mm -hmm. and influence policy in the various national assemblies, like you know, parliament in Ghana, we have to lobby so that they change the structures. Mm -hmm. When the structure is not sound, there's a buffer will buy me out. Anything you put on top will not be good. Yep. That's true. The structures. So that's sort of a revisiting our curriculum and reading. I, I do some work with uh, schools, uh, reshaping the curriculum to fit every group. You know, culturally relevant, you know, mm -hmm. teaching in STEM, okay, so that girls who are non dominant, minorities, blacks, Hispanic who are non dominant, in Indians, American Indians who are non dominant students can have a place in the school system and achieve and attain those levels. Now, let's go to the internet uh, connectivity, uh, connectivity. Unless there is a group who lobby for deregularization of government controlling those opportunities. I'll cite an example. In Ghana, before Rawlings came to power the first time, petroleum products were distributed by BP, which is British Petroleum, Shell, which is a Dutch you know, company now part of uh, the Anglo, yeah. Mobile, which is America company. Individual Ghanaians were not allowed to establish gas stations. You can only be an agent for some of these oh three individual companies. But when that was deregularized, Ghanaians began buying crude oil and refining and distributing it. That was a game changer. Mm. Unless we lobby to have those structures in place, the, the gatekeepers. And uh, I'll tell you, our members of parliament, some of them, their hands are very sticky with uh, corruption, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, very sticky. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> some money, you know, it's like, uh, it's for them, right? Yeah. So what we can do in the diaspora is to form a pressure group and lobby some of them who have a very, you know, transparent way of dealing with things to lobby others. If we want to wait for government to solve all the problems, let me quote Reagan, not my popular friend anyway. <laughs> government is not the solution. Awesome. Is the problem. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. Is not the solution. I, so like if you want to see the change the government take care of things for you, nothing. That is the problem of Africa as a continent. If you look at the employment data in this particular country, United States, where I'm speaking from, government is not the highest employer. No. It's the least employer. There are very few federal universities in this country. Mm -hmm. The federal university in this country are the military academies. And one or two of the postgraduate institutions for the military. The federal government has not got university. In, in Africa, we are looking at the main central government to provide schooling and shape policies. There is no national curriculum of mathematics in this country. Many people think that, oh, they have a national exam like in Africa. In Nigeria, you have a West African Examination Council that was 13 students. I left Nigeria way back 86, you know? So government was controlling that exam. In mm. Ghana, the same. But in the United States, students don't take a national exam. If you want to go to college, 
It's your choice. You take advanced yes. placement. If you have enlightened parents who guide you to do that, Otherwise, you take college level courses and then you go to college and go through some curriculum again to direct you. You can go there with very weak background in the STEM subjects, but you can take remedial courses and move on. Again, in Nigeria, they have a transition curriculum. If you do A level before going, you do the course for three years. Otherwise, you take JAM and you do it for four years. Mm. Just like yeah. The first two years of American curriculum is general education. Mm. The first two years of any degree. Yes. Is general education. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not like it's designed for a particular degree. It did your foundation courses. By the third year, you start picking your third year level courses that can shape you into the fourth year mm. to be able to major in that particular STEM field. So again, for children over there and here, we in education or parents who have a lot of insight, we have to help. Like Professor Bafo said, most of the ministers in Ghana, they only came to study over here. They don't know anything about living over here or working over here. They mm -hmm. have very little knowledge about how the system works. Right. And some of them, they live on campus, study, and then from there, they carry their bag, they are gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. With apology to some of them, they don't know anything. They have never visited a real mainstream America's home. Right. Yeah. No All lived experience. Campus life. That mm. is true. So that that is true. Back, how can such a person take the lessons from here and reshape what is happening. They only have a textbook to look at. So mm. those are some of our problems, but then they are, with apologies, some of them are very arrogant. They will not listen to me. I try, I went to Ghana, I wanted to help to reshape. They are so arrogant, they will not listen and always. Insecurity, insecurity. So those of you from, uh, who from America, you come here, you think that you know better than us, that is a problem. <laughs> so we can only try and cultivate some of them to be on our side, and then we can influence policy. Yeah. Right. That, the gatekeepers will not allow you to change anything. Wow. wow. Thank so you so a, much. That's a prayer area. <laughs> we, we, we are coming close to the top of the hour, but since our chief executive uh, editor is here, um, uh, yes, and I hope all is well with you. Are you ready to do an editorial? We'll, we'll cross over. You, you do the editorial, then I do the announcement. Is that okay? All right. Good afternoon. Greetings to everyone. Sorry for not catching the train at this main station, but waiting on the substation to get on board. It's July 10th, as we all know. It is the 191st day of the year 2022. And July 10th is the 28th Sunday of 2022 and the 29th week of 2022. It is the 20th day of summer. And as the Lisa always referred to you, we have 74 <laughs> days left to wow. fall. Well, uh, summer is not my favorite season, but th that notwithstanding, I like the sun because I plant my, I grow my vegetables at this time. All the same, everything is going well. Uh, just missed the train. On this July 10, 2022, the only United States holiday or popular observance that we decided to talk about is National Pina Colada Day. But don't ask your humble servant what that means or what it entails. <laughs> National Pina Colada Day. Well, I don't do it. I don't know what that it is. That is ridiculous. So I just keep it, I kept it because it was, it looked and sounded funny when I saw it. So the discussion today, as you've been following since four o'clock or so since the top of the last hour has been on engineering, part of our STEM acronym. For this July 10th, we are therefore not talking about STEM, which is the T, we'll bring that to you next time. And that being said, I agree with, well, I came across this in our chat room. Somebody suggested that being a dishwasher is <laughs> being an engineer is still Okay, engineer, something like that. So, so agree with the dishwasher or agree with Einstein, whatever it is, engineering is a discipline by itself. It is a standalone. 
even though it has to depend on its cousins and sisters in technology, engineering, um, uh, mathematics, and uh, what is the other one again? So science. that being said, science, yes, that is it. So those are the things that go with it. But engineering is all a field, as I said, of its own. And whether we agree with nature or we agree with what we go into the laboratory and manipulate and come out with, it is a means of transforming a dream into reality. From last time we did an editorial on this, we said that the next question that comes to mind is, what is engineering? That question might have been answered in the course of the last hour. Yes. But I just wanted to say that from the Merriam Webster's the Deluxe Dictionary, we had two definitions, the application of science and mathematics by which they by which the properties of matter and sources of energy are mastered and put together for man to profit from, or the design and manufacture of complex products. All the same, from these definitions and the ones that went before I came in to meet the learned professors, all I can say is that whatever it takes, we need engineering, engineering that transforms things, engineering that makes things, not engineering that washes things or consumes things. We consume <laughs> what has been perfected by the engineer. So in other words, engineering allows engineers or in a more down to earth sense, it allows you and I to use skills and artistic means to transform new raw materials in order to bring, uh, bring forth consumables or things that we can use for our ends. And when we dress STEM with, that is the big acronym that we're talking about, whatever it is, it has those three or four letters and they mean a lot. So at this point, we can therefore agree with Albert Einstein that scientists investigate that which already exists while engineers create that which has never been. That is the key I took away from Einstein and saying engineering does build the bridges between what nature provides, that is the go through the natural resources and they're able to bring us finished products or yes. what I call consumables. Those are yeah. the things that engineering is meant to do. And as I said, it is the building of real concrete things. It is the dream that is transformed into concrete reality. That Reverend Palm is engineering as I see it no matter what the professors say, I agree with them totally. And I tell them, yes, it must be a dream, dreamt, got, uh, get up, fold your sleeves, go to work and make things happen. Don't just dream and say, oh, I had a beautiful dream last night. What did you make of that mm -hmm. dream? So if you want to transform your dishwasher into something else, maybe a generator to provide electricity, you'll be doing engineering, but that, said, I want to say, profs, I thank you all for being here with us. And let's move on, Reverend Pan. Thank you. So you see, I, that's why they call you prof. I mean, this journalistic legend, the, everybody who grew up in Cameroon knows that's only from Kenneke. So Niaso, you see, this show can never be the same without you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you're OK. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, before I make the announcement, there's a question I want to ask, but I'll wait till Professor Swansea comes on in two weeks because we have just 30 more yes. minutes, 37 more minutes yes. on the show, you know. So next next week, we're going to be tackling the T in STEM. And we're going to be, uh, we're going to have a, a couple of um, uh, IT uh, folks here uh, to, to, to talk to us about technology. We know we are in the in information technology era, or some people call it, or as we say in business knowledge era. So wherever we turn around, we are dealing with technology, wherever. What are some, a lot of times we don't even know that we are dealing with technology. You go to a place, it, your, your phone is buffering, trying to pick up a Wi-Fi, that's all technology. Technology has in, invaded our lives. So we, we had a video of a, a young African girl complaining that the father was always on Facebook, the mother was always on WhatsApp, and they were not paying attention to her. And she was uh, accusing technology of stealing her parents and she needs her parents to raise her up, not technology. So we're gonna be talking about that next week. And then in two weeks, we'll be talking about um, mathematics with Professor, yeah, Professor Swansea. So um, 
Uh, Ambassador Lisa, I'm gonna hand over to you and um, then Nia Song. But uh, unfortunately, we're, we're gonna close the show on time today, you know? So that means we will not have the uh, theme song, the national anthem, right? <laughs> I, I, I can play it at the end. I'll play it at the end. Okay, okay. So oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Professor, go ahead. Africa Online Media. No, Ambassador Lisa, one second, Professor Swansea was gonna say something. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me, as well as possible, for our editor to be introduced. And uh, oh, okay, Nia Song, please. Yeah, thank you, Nia Song. Please introduce yourself because this is Professor Swansea's first time here. He already introduced himself, so you have to watch the show to 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 get to know him because he'll be back in two weeks. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Nia Song. Well, I'm Barnabas in Kemleke, but popularly known as a song Lefek in Kemleke. The name my father gave me is a song Lefek. My father's <laughs> name is in Kemleke. I come from a part of a country that I love to call home, but which has been, have been deprived of that. So I'm a man without a home, home <laughs> without a home. But all the same, I come from English, the English speaking part of Cameroon. I went to school in the English speaking part, elementary and secondary, and I went to the only university at the time in the uh, in Yaoundé, the capital, where I learned to bricole, as they say. I, I learned to practice some French, to say a few words in French without coordinating them. But I am who I am. I used to be a journalist until the sun set on that profession for me in Cameroon because they said I was too big mouth. I always criticized the big people, so they didn't want to see me. So I took refuge in the United States and I now live in the United States. So that is me. I teach journalism. Well, I taught journalism in Cameroon before coming over to the United States. Currently, I teach citizenship to those, those from other parts of the world who want to become American citizens. So I do that on an ongoing basis. And my score percentage has been 98% so far. Awesome. So that is that. And uh, these are people who come with no knowledge of English or very rare, very little Eng uh, English uh, skills, but we mm -hmm. try to do it possible for them to go to the interview, USCIS interview, and succeed by speaking in English, writing at least a sentence correctly in English, mm -hmm. and being able to talk to the USCIS official and say, yes, I am ready to be a US citizen. I might have taken too long, but that is- No, 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 it's our show. We can extend it. It's our time, it's yes. our show. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have any uh, supervisors, so. All right, <laughs> thank you, Professor Swansea. That was awesome. All right, Ambassador Lisa. Thank you so much. Africa Online has an ongoing fundraiser. It is called Operation Borehole 55. You see, it is our desire to see a borehole put in every country on the continent of Africa. So many of our medical facilities, our government approved medical facilities do not have any clean running water. Let me rephrase it. They don't have any running water, clean or otherwise. And it is just un unconscionable to think that this is a medical facility where women are giving birth to babies and there is no water to clean the facility, the instruments, or even themselves. So we want to build boreholes. We are excited to announce that our first borehole has been up and running in Sierra Leone. I believe there's gonna be a ribbon cutting ceremony shortly. And the- This month, yes. The engineer was so um, elated with the work that we were doing that not only did he volunteer his services, he also volunteered and paid for the rewiring or the wiring of the delivery room and the waiting room with electrical lights. Now I was blown away by that because bad enough they have no running water, but to think that now you're as a me you're medical profession, you're delivering babies in the dark because you have no lights. So Operation Borehole is getting ready to start our second borehole, which will go in Kenya. But we cannot do this work without you. We need you to donate. I don't care how large, how small, if you do it every month, if you do it quarterly or one great big mount at the end of the year or any time during the year, we need you to go visit our website at www.africaonlinetv.org. That's africaonlinetv.org and make a donation towards our borehole project so that our children on the continent don't have to send their children at four and five o'clock in the morning to a river five miles to get a bucket of water to bring back for their family. Not only does the borehole take care of the medical facilities, but we have it fixed where the community can have access to the borehole at 
also. So right now, the borehole in Sierra Leone is also taking care of 6,000 households. Yeah. And that's how many people that are that's in 30, the house. That's, people. Six, that's 30, almost 30,000 people in the community. One borehole is taking care of 30,000 people. And we can do that across the continent of Africa. So again, please visit our website at africaonline.org and make a donation towards Africa our, Online TV. AfricaOnlineTV.org. Thank you. Oh, Africa's sister organization, Africa's Brain Bank, will be hosting its annual summit and charity ball this October 8th and 9th. And we're going to the beautiful town of the ATL. Some uh -huh. people call Atlanta, but we're going to Atlanta, Georgia for our summit and charity ball. Won't you come on and join us as we benefit? our STEM program and other programs as well. You can also go to the website, which is africaonlinetv.org and find out more about it. And I'm gonna put the link in the chat box. If you're ready to buy your ticket, I'm ready to buy mine. I know Reverend Pam has bought hers, but if you're ready to buy your ticket now- I bought the first ticket. Uh, come on and meet us in Atlanta for our charity ball, Nesan. One second. We. Oui. Okay. I, I just want to say Professor Bafo is not only in Atlanta, but he is also involved in coordinating the academic symposium we're going to have that morning. So it's going to be packed. We talk about Africa's brain power will be on display. If you think you are smart, you know you are smart, you know you have brains. Bring your brains down to Atlanta and let's showcase you. So this is going to be Saturday morning, you know, before the event in the evening. So I, I just wanted to let our, our viewers know that Professor Barfour is one of the coordinators of the academic symposium in the morning. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Oui, un petit uh, annonce là pour uh, notre émission de Africa Online Media Corporation. L'une des réalisations de notre groupe c'est de la construction ou de creuser des puits d'eau dans les divers pays africains. Il y en a 55, donc nous avons Operation Borehole 55 avec la construction potentielle de 55 puits d'eau portables dans les divers pays africains parce que l'eau, c'est la vie et nous vous sollicitons un peu de sous pour qu'on pour qu'on puisse continuer à faire cette construction. Parce qu'on a commencé au Sierra Leone, ça passe très bien déjà, ça sert déjà une, une communauté de 6 000 personnes, de familles 6 000 personnes, avec une population totale de la communauté de 30 000 personnes. Donc c'est déjà quelque chose. Nous vous sollicitons alors d'aller à www.africaonlinetv.org pour faire votre contribution. Tout est taxe déductible et tout sera comptabiliser. Et cela dit, merci beaucoup pour votre contribution déjà. Et je tourne maintenant vers Africa's Brain Bank qui organise son sommet annuel euh, le, euh, en octobre, le 8 et 9 octobre à Atlanta. Donc, vous êtes euh, invités, soyez avec nous euh, le 8 et le 9 octobre pour qu'on puisse continuer à voir euh, comment mettre les, toutes les connaissances d'Afrique ou des ressortissants africains sur un, plan, un panneau pour aider le continent de se développer. Uh, that is said, I think I have gone beyond my one minute. So please, yes. I see Dr. Ogoji is out there, but uh, Ambassador Lisa, you have the ball. Okay, so we're back to the conversation. We want to welcome our chief medical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> He's a delivery engineer. <laughs> so, so he would be a medical engineer, am I right, Dr. Bafu? Uh, he uh, delivers uh, babies. He delivers babies. He makes things better. He's making things better. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a medical, he's, he's a medical doctor, but not a medical engineer. OK, oh, OK, OK. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> Welcome, Dr. Go. It's been a while. We're happy to have you back. So we're talking about the E in STEM, the engineer. We've learned so far what an engineer is, what an engineer does. We've learned some different types of engineers. We've discussed um, quite a few things. Now, my next question, and I'm gonna give Dr. Goji an opportunity um, to speak uh, in just a second. We're gonna let him get caught up in the conversation. But I had a question. Uh, as we were talking, as we were talking about 
the young lady in school who could not get a degree in engineering because she didn't have a background in math. And we know that in Africa, the children take what you call that national test and that test kind of determines what they'll go on to university and study. I've, met, I've run into so many girls, so many young women who are, are accountants that are so unhappy with their chosen profession. So now we have a continent full of people who are going to school to study at the university at their parents' expense and they're not happy with what they're doing. How do we, besides lobbying, how do we help change that culture? Or is it possible to change its current culture? Um, well, I can take uh, that one quick, but before uh, that young lady got a degree, though, I want to put it on the- on Oh, she did get her degree. Oh, oh yeah, she did, because after I, I you remember I said, I asked her to go take, I paid for her to go take uh, those courses, uh, so that in essence, after getting technically getting a college degree, she went back to high school to get a high school degree. You know that is how crazy it was. But she ended up getting the degree, went on to the UK, got a master degree in engineering, and then went to Germany, got a PhD in engineering. So she got a degree. Okay, I thought you said you lobbied and they denied her. I'm sorry. No, they denied her initially. The the thing is, if she did not get the high school equivalency, there is no way they were going to give it to her. Okay. Yeah, but she has to go through the process. So it kind of delayed her for one year before she got a degree. Uh, now, in terms of lobbying, um, I think, you know, I think you heard me talk about it. You heard Professor Swansea talk about it. Uh, the, the, the people at home are very difficult to work with because I don't think they have the same level of agency that we have, mm. that we, we want to change the system. Now, before I answer, let me let me pin this scenario. I want you to imagine when you go to any city in the U.S. You and they, they generally have a large conference center, you know. So just picture how big the conference centers are, and, and picture one of them in in let's say in Yaoundé or you know Douala or Accra, Ghana, one in Lagos, Abiokuta. And can you imagine having such a large facility that can even take maybe 10,000 employees and all these, the top of these structures is nothing but solar, right? You put solar everywhere. So power is 100%, 24-7, 365 days. And then you pipe fiber through the system to have internet with no problem. If you have that, not only are you going to be able to recruit uh, students, who graduate from whatever program, but you can also go to places like Germany, the United Kingdom, the United States, Australia, and say, look, I can take a job that maybe uh, I can give to my people. That is what the Chinese are doing. That is what the Koreans are doing. That is what the Filipinos are doing. We are not doing any of that because we don't have the technology. And I think Pam said that earlier on, that. Our people want to people in the dark because if they are not in the dark and they see the light, they will never vote for them. And see, that is so trying to lobby these people. I don't have an answer to that because I tried, you know, I tried. I mean, the example I gave you about a whole university uh, professor with so many experience telling me a student with first class, you know, and I, I still think she probably still has the record in that school. First class engineering got A in calculus, all this big called differential with AA, and the, somebody had the gut to say, go back to high school to get the qualification that would have brought you here to take the course in the first wow. place. <laughs> you know, so, so, so that is the people you want to lobby with. Mm -hmm. And so for me, to be honest with you, based on my experience, based on almost seven years staying in Ghana, dealing with them, I don't think. I think the only solution is when people are not in power, and that is why I propose the Sri Lanka model. Okay, real quick, <laughs> real, 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 real quick. Let me tell you guys, uh, uh, Dr. Buffer is a firebrand. So anyway, I, I, I want to say this, uh, 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 Dr. Buffer, when you're doing your last word, please take a moment and talk about the event that you're having. You know, uh, the, your upcoming event. Oh, you're For yeah, no, I'm saying that when you do your last word, not now, after Dr. Ogoji, when they call you, if you can pull that information, you know, they uh, the uh, chat box. 
Yeah, yeah, to, to help um uh, uh, with the parents and high school students. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm do, I'm just reminding you that during your your last word, make okay. make sure you share that information. Okay. Uh, all right, I think Dr. Goji is next. Uh, hello, can you guys hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah. So I am not an engineer, but uh, what I can say is that um, <laughs> we need to change our orientation in Africa. Mm -hmm. Trust me, so many of our African brothers and sisters who came here and did nursing, engineering, we all, they all have arts background. In Africa, when you go to school, you either do physics, chemistry, mathematics to the science, or you do literature, history to become art student. Mm. Those things are good. Get the basic knowledge, no matter the degree or what you want to study, is important. But engineering is an art. Engineering is something you, you develop something, you, you make something, you actually use technology to change people's life. So what am I saying? Um, so we, first of all, try to do our things that no matter what you study in a university, unfortunately, what the white man gave us in Africa is to go cram and come back and work for somebody. Mm -hmm. That's what it left to our forefathers. And that has not helped. Things have to change that after the basic education, either university degree or even high school degree, you choose a career path and decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Even if you study history, I want to go into engineering. If you have the interest in automobile engineering, you can go in and learn the act of automobile engineering. You can learn basic, trust me, engineering or most of the things you do is basic physics plus negative go together plus minus is basic physics. Everything go back to basic physics that anybody can learn given the right environment. All we need is the right tool. The typical example, my, somebody came to, to replace my air condition yesterday in my house. He is a high school dropout. He finished, <laughs> he finished, he told me he finished, uh, I think it was 11th grade and dropped out of school after 11th to 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And then he went to learn how to do air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So he has done this for the past seven years, only 21. He was the only person who came to my house to install this air condition. Mm -hmm. He said he has been here for the past. I, I, got, I got to know more about him. I said, can I learn this job in three months? The guy laughed. So I've been doing this for seven years or eight years. It involved plumbing, uh, mechanic, and some electrical part of work. He was the only one. He's only 23, 24-year-old guy. Came and installed a whole air condition unit in my house and walked away. Of course, he has the best equipment. He has a car, has a truck, he has a forklift, he has everything in it. So and, and made a lot of money. He makes a lot of money. So everybody can learn anything if you have the interest. So we have to change our relationship back home. I want to be an engineer. It doesn't matter what you study in high school. Come, we we'll train you from the scratch. If you want to become the overall boss, if you go and do the degree. Trust me, the Masters and PhD should not be should not be installing, should not be fixing cars. Or they should be building, making, trying to make, how will I put it, try to design new things for the people to use. So PhD engineering should be geared towards development, research, and making new product so that the ordinary people can use it to can, can use it to do the engineering work they need. So we have to change it. It's not all about the college. Everybody's born to go to college. Don't get me wrong, I like school. Don't get me wrong, I want all my kids to go to college, but they don't have to, they don't want to. It doesn't end with a college degree. Engineering is what you learn with basic physics and science. Of course, the big ones designed to design the solar panels, the batteries, the new machines, the new equipment, it require very high technology that I cannot do. That only people who are real engineers in the field of engineering with research, to develop new product are supposed to do that. But any other person can go into mechanical part of work if properly trained with the right equipment. And that boils down to why are we all rushing to the white man country to do all type of job? What are we doing when we come here? We all, some of us clean houses, some of us sweep, some of us do plumbing, some of us work cars, some of us do security. Why are those things important? They are very important because you are the governor of the country, of a state, you cannot function without the cleaner. You cannot function without the plumber. You cannot function without the electrician. 
and this is the job we come here to do. This job are available in Africa, just that they don't, know how to they don't pay them well, they don't value them. And things went down south in Africa because of our currency. I'm sorry to say it. Mm -hmm. If when our currency was good, you're a security man, you can, if you do 40 hours work of security for somebody, you can, you can pay a house rent, buy a small car and take care of your children. So I don't want to change the topic, but engineering is something that anybody can do. You don't have to have a science or art degree to function in a, to work the simple basic engineering. I mean, basic engineering, don't get me wrong. There are real engineers that have been trained to design new machines, new computers. They design to make just this mouse every day for more and make it better and better every day. That's different. Everybody cannot do that. But simple putting things together for the engineering, we should learn to make it work because we need it in our society. We need to train people and pay them well so that we can move the society going forward. My take. I, th I think it's time for the last round. I think that was his remarks and his last word, yes. I, I, I know. It is 525 and Anaya we're gonna turn this over to you for your last word. But before I do, I just want to say to um, Dr. Swazi, don't, I don't want you to feel like we ignored you. This was your first time, but we don't want you to answer all the questions that we're gonna have for you in two weeks because you will be our guest in two weeks. Yeah. So that's not, that's kind of the only reason we kind of didn't oh, ask. No, he doesn't feel that way at all. He just came here to support Dr. Bafo and to see the show, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. I can't just see what you do so that uh, in two weeks when I come around, I, I know the show, a little bit of the show, yeah. It, it, it's unscripted. You can never yes. tell. You can never <laughs> tell what you hear about a, a, a stainless steel engineer. You yeah. know, anything can happen on this show. <laughs> but, uh, let, let me add something about what can we do because of the curriculum. Uh, I'm talking about Ghana and Nigeria of 40 to 50 years ago when I was here. But things, there's, a, there's a little light in the tunnel. At our time, we didn't have uh, guidance counselors in schools. Mm -hmm. But in today's, you know, uh, South African countries and schools, they have guidance counselors. Oh, those wow. Gatekeepers. You can work through those informal gatekeepers. Even if you don't have a national policy, you can infiltrate schools, target schools, adopt some schools, and then these gatekeepers and have forum with parents. 2018, I went to a village in Ghana. I normally send books to a school, uh, a village my grandmother came from. Uh, so I donate books to them. I do professional development for the teachers. And I tax them with something. What my tax? When I went to school there, primary school there, which I attended, they used to, to beat us, not lashing, they beat us. They'll put you on a table and beat you if you get one problem wrong in mathematics or arithmetic. So I said, if they can stop beating the kids, I'll buy them a printer. Because they talk about they needed a printer. So if you can stop beating, they make a record, they will not be there. Because no child learns when there is a fear factor. So we can infiltrate schools gradually and then have parents offer professional development for teachers and parents about career guidance. Today, we are sending books to every village in my enclave. We are opening libraries. As I'm here, I keep on getting the tab because they have a, a Zoom meeting, which is where you are supposed to be, but I want to come to you first. Yeah. So when you, you give something, you ask for something back. So I'm becoming a politician now, right? <laughs> right. Th thank you, uh, Professor uh, uh, Swansi. We'll consider that your last word, and we'll hear more in two weeks because mm -hmm. we are running out of time. I need a song. Uh, 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 and I'm we're going to extend the show to accommodate the last words. Okay, that being said, should I turn to uh, Dr. Balfour for his last word? Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, you know, while I'm on this platform, I want to make sure. Uh, I will not be the one redefining engineering. So let me say this. Uh, what I can talk about generally, you know, the air condition 
in the field of engineering, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at engineering, you know, for you to be a good engineer, you're going to have a group, a team. We call them the general the technology team. So you're going to have the scientists, the mathematicians, the engineer, the technologists, and you're going to have the technicians and also the artisans, which include the draft men. And so what Kinsley described generally are the technicians, even though because mm -hmm. You know, they are technicians, they are not, in terms of uh, language, we don't call them engineers. And I want to, I, at least I want to say that. I'm not against them being called engineers. For me, I think if that will make most of our people become who we want them to become. Technicians. That's yes, we, yeah, we can call them engineers. I don't have any problem. But I want to make sure we put that in perspective. Now, my last words, I think moving forward as a group, one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves, one is, for instance, since I'm in engineering, the question I wanted to ask is, you know, when you take, if you take Kwame Nkrumah's words back in 1957, he actually put a hypothesis during that day of 1957 that Ghana was going to show the rest of the world that African is capable of managing his own affairs. Mm -hmm. That was part of his speech in the 6th of March, 1957. And for me, as, as a scientist, as an engineer, I think that statement he put there uh, has failed. Because if you want to test whether uh, we've been able to show the, the rest of the world that we can run or not, I think the data there is, is, is says otherwise. And one of the reasons is because of the education system we have. And I think uh, Professor Swansea and both cases also talk about that. So the question that I think I have is, as far as engineering is concerned, should we be teaching the kind of engineering that we teach in Africa? That's the question. I want us to put that because if the answer is no, that means we have to change the curriculum. Should we be changing mm -hmm. the, the phases we are teaching in Africa? Should we change the chemistry, the sociology, the business, all that stuff? So that is the question. So that is my last words now. Uh, talking about what I'm doing, this I think this will be on the on the thirtieth. I have two programs, but one relates more to what we do, and that is on the thirtieth of this month. Um, technically, be the person in, in charge of running a small workshop for college-going students. Okay, so I'm targeting college freshmen for 2022, uh, and all what we want to do is we want parents and their children to come to this Zoom meeting, bring all the questions, because we are going to advise them what college in the first semester is all about. Mm -hmm. What they should do, what they should not do, what course they should take, what they should not take, how they should talk to the advisors. Because I'm in a program where at times, if you're not careful, you may find a student being loaded with so many courses that they may end up filling off all of them because they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the program is going to be, we call it uh, Freshman 101, Navigating the First Semester of College. So please, I think we send this to the platform, share it as much as you can. It's free. Come in, bring your questions, because we want our kids to succeed so that, number one, they don't change their major because they were ill-advised. Because we want most of them to be, go to STEM. Because I see that clearly. When they come to engineering, they fail across one because they were ill-advised. They say, OK, then I'm going to do X. And, and we know we want so many Black folks to be in the STEM area, because that is where the jobs are. That is where they pay most. Exactly. Yeah, please, uh, Dr. Baffo, if you can, you can put the link on the chat box so that yes. uh, our, our viewers that watch this show after today, they will be able to get it too. All right, okay. yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ogoji, are you with us so you can give us your last word, please? Yeah. Well, again, um, I don't have much to say. Um, I, what, I was talking about, what, what I was talking about was technicians, OK? Yeah. Um, they are the main people that do the work in the field. That's why I said some people design the engineering, who are the real engineers. I like that clarification. But technicians, we lock them back home. We should train people to do those things so that they can, the engineers should train them to do those things and that will make life better for the whole community. We don't have reasonable people without area. Um, everybody cannot be engineers. The engineers are few. The technicians work with them, and we need them, more of them to be trained. Even if you're an arts or science student, you can learn an act of technician to make a change in the society. Let's learn practical way of doing things in Africa rather than theoretical.
Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's vocational Thank you very training. Much. Yes. A vocational training. It's amazing because when we're growing up, people that uh, went to vocational schools or technical schools, we used to think that they were not that smart, but now they are the ones that rule the world. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> they, they still do that in Africa. They, they think they are not smart. It's I, ridiculous. I, I have, I will probably send something to you guys later on about an interview I did in Ghana. Okay, but please in, do. Yeah, I will, yeah. All right. Okay, yes. Ambassador, let's say your last word. My last word is a couple questions. <laughs> Is there a flyer for your freshman 101? And is that for the continent? Is that for the diaspora or those in the US or, or what? I'll send the flyer to you right now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. My email, yeah. please. Yeah, you can join it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. So we have had a wonderful show with um, Dr. Bafu. Bafu. <laughs> You know, because I, I keep looking at that four bafo, and uh, we look forward to having Dr. Swayze. I don't really have any last word. I have enjoyed myself immensely. I've learned quite a lot. Oh, I sent you um, a message in the chat, a private message in the chat box, uh, Dr. Robert. I'm not going to butcher your name again. Oh, you did? Okay, let me check quick. Uh, yes. You said we thank me. you all for joining us. Come back next week as we will be talking about the T in our STEM program. That is my last word. Thank you very much, Ambassador Lisa, uh, Dr. Balfour, Dr. Swazi, Swanzi, and uh, the rest of us who have been here, Dr. Ogoji, uh, Ambassador Lisa, uh, our CEO, Reverend Pan, and uh, Sister Ruth, who is on the road but could not join the program. I want to extend my thanks to all of you for keeping the house uh, running, for making sure that nothing was missed and making sure that the show went on as planned. Thank you all very much and we'll see you next time. Oh, oh, sorry, my apologies. I got distracted. I was looking for the flyer. We are ending with, we are, um, with, with yes. wait, 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 hold on. Okay, okay, this is this is out because we want Amazon Lisa to be able to sleep tonight. Yes, I need so, to be able to sleep tonight. Yeah, so we're gonna play the anthem. That's our anthem. <laughs> all right, thank you all. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> now we no. see a beautiful girl, not a son. No, I don't want to see that girl. You guys just bear with me. Oh my God, hold on. We don't want. Uh, I don't want to see, wait, hold on. <laughs> Right. I, I don't know if you can see the no. on. Okay. But, but it was singing in the background though. No, something something happened here, but Lisa, I think that was a distraction. Yes, that was a distraction. You got you got thro thrown off. I guess no, this show we we have to play this um anthem. Yeah, Dr. Baffer, did you did you uh, post the thing on the on the chat box? Oh, for the uh the link? Yes. The link is actually because it's PDF. I may have to copy just the ID for you. No, uh, okay, that, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Oh, it's a link. All right. Africa. Oh, no. Africans, Africans from Africa. 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 Africans have many bright ideas. If only you let us share. If you really want to know my history, please come. Sit down, listen to my story. God gave us a wisdom. He guides our footsteps, makes us shine and transform. Hey, as one people with so many cultures, yet indeed we are one. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Let us all unite behind Africa Online Media Corporation. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa.
It's time to come together, promote awareness, progress, and solution. Hey, Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. All Africans can rally for a common cause to believe without judgment in what our brother does. To identify and resolve our challenges, to allow each other's ideas without regard to standards. As one people with so many cultures, yes, it did be a one. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Let us solve all the problems plaguing our continent. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. Let us empower Africans in and out of Africa. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Africa Online Media Corporation, that's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. They have all the resources we need to benefit our society. Oh. for everyone if we believe prosperity for Africans if we believe medical facilitation for Africans if we believe stand up stand up Africa is for Africa Africa Online Media Corporation that's a good way to start stand up Thank you so much, Dr. Balfour. Swansea, thank you guys so much. Niasong, thank you for making it. Bye. Thank you and good night. All right. Bye, all.